Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Jarvanen, and welcome to our virtual sketching session, Drop-In Drawing. I work in education here at the Met, um, and I'm a visual artist and prop maker. I work primarily at our branch location, the Met Cloisters, which is located in Fort Tryon Park in northern Manhattan and devoted to the art and architecture of medieval Europe. While the museum is closed, we're bringing our collection and programming uh, to you to help challenge and grow your creative skills. Today I'm going to guide you through how to practice figure drawing. We will be drawing from the African king, one of three kings who bring gifts to the newborn Jesus in a scene known as the Adoration of the Magi. The sculpture is from Germany and was carved before 1489. The Metz collection has many objects depicting the human figure. We will use this work of art to start understanding the shapes uh, that make up the body and talk a bit about gesture and proportion. The human figure is dynamic, moving and changing depending on your perspective and the pose and movement of the body. This is in contrast to inanimate objects and still life art and can take some time to master. You can choose to focus on the gesture, the anatomy and proportion, or the volume of the body um, while practicing figure drawing. Focusing on one or two of these elements at a time will help you to build your ability and confidence in capturing the human form. So before we get too far, let's define some useful terms. Gesture refers to the movement of the body, usually with an emotion or purpose. The gesture line, which we will talk more about later, refers to a single line representing that movement. The term proportion here refers to the, re um, the relative size of body parts, meaning how large or small the limbs, torso, and head are in relation to each other. The volume of the body is how the body takes up space. An artist uses line, light, and shadow, brighter and darker areas of the drawing, to make volume visible. And finally, the word foreshortening describes the use of line in a drawing to suggest an object extending in a direction, even though the object might not be completely visible from that angle. Our work of art, The African King, is a painted and gilded wood sculpture standing at just over five feet tall. As one of the three kings of the adoration waiting to present his gift to baby Jesus, he is an imagined ruler and wise man from a far off land. His face is open and kind, his dress is refined and his bearing is elegant. His pose is uh, particularly like a ballet dancer. He holds his gift of myrrh in his right hand with the lid in his left, and though his pose is relaxed, it still shows personality with his left leading leg at a jaunty angle. The African King is currently on display in the medieval galleries at the Met on Fifth Avenue as part of the Crossroads installation, Power and Piety, so I hope you can go see him once the museum reopens. A quick note on choosing sculpture instead of another type of art. If we were to use a painting or any other two-dimensional object as our subject, we would be locked into a single view of that figure. But if you go to the Met's website and view our collection, there are many sculptures that have multiple photographs describing the artwork in the round, allowing for varied viewpoints and opportunities to draw from a new perspective. This way we can decide which perspective is most interesting and most helpful to us. I chose this figure not only because he is a favorite among museum staff, um, but also he is one of the rare images of Africans produced in medieval Europe. Also, he has a simple but emotive pose, meaning he does not look stiff, um, and the perspective of our, of our drawing will not be overly complicated. His figure is also easy to see and not hidden behind too many layers of fabric. His basic form and proportions are visible to us. We want to avoid figures in flowing robes or baggy clothing, since we will not be able to see their bodies. And finally, his proportions are reasonable and not too exaggerated. These are all important things to keep in mind when we choose a work of art to draw from. Also keep in mind that since we are drawing from art, this is an artist representation of the human body. 
someone's perception of how the human figure looks and moves. This will still be a helpful exercise to us, but take it with a grain of salt. So, with some concepts laid down and our goal of observing and drawing the human figure in mind, let's talk about supplies. So, for today's exercise, you will want a drawing surface, such as a blank piece of paper. It could be a drawing paper like what I have here, or it could be a piece of paper out of your printer, the back of a piece of mail, or a lined paper from a notebook. For drawing, you will want to use something that you find easy to work with. I like using a soft pencil for figure drawing. Uh, this is an 8B, which is very soft but you can use whatever is available, like a regular yellow HB pencil, or a cheap mechanical pencil, a fancy mechanical pencil, whatever you have on hand. If you don't have a pencil, you can even use a ballpoint pen, something I did plenty of uh, growing up. So, for finishing our drawings, once we've reached a good stopping point, I thought we'd grab a marker I just have a Sharpie here, something I had laying around, not even a black one, um, it's dark blue, but again, feel free to use what you have on hand. The idea here is to use what is available and what you are comfortable with. Now let's go over some basic ways to approach sketching our figure. Some people start with a specific part of the body, usually the head, then draw a wire frame representing the basic structure of the figure. The head provides a good anchor point to determine the pose and the figure's proportions. Those who are focused on gesture may want to start with a gesture line, either at the center of the body or in a particularly dramatic part of the pose, and use that line to lay out the limbs of the body in relation. There's also the option to work with three-dimensional shapes to create a figure, kind of like a mannequin. We are going to use our sculpture to try out each of these approaches and find what works best for us. The great thing about these kinds of exercises in art is that there is no right way to accomplish our end goal. It's about experimenting and exploring our own process and trying something new. So, I've chosen a front view of the African king and I'm going to start the first sketch using his head as an anchor point. And I'm just going to do all my sketches right on this one sheet of paper. These are small and quick. So, by drawing an oval for his head, I've defined his head size. And from there, we can lay down some lines for a rough sketch of his pose and proportions. His relaxed and broad shoulders. And then we go down into his leaning torso. He's got one arm held out to the side here, one arm in front. We've got hips and then his jaunty leg coming out with a foot. So I've just laid out a wire, what's called a wire frame of his basic proportions, you know, and I can go in and fill in some of the details just to make sure that I have this correct. He's got a hand in front. His tunic comes down to about here. You know, his leg has a knee and a calf. But the basis was that wire frame. So that's one way to start our sketch. Next, let's try drawing from a gesture line. In trying to capture someone's gesture, we can start with a loose line representing the figure's major movement or pose. Something more dynamic, like a figure throwing a ball, that might be a line extending from the throwing hand through the torso and out the opposite foot. Um, but for this figure, which has a less dynamic pose, I'm simply starting at the top of his head, right here, which is almost straight up and down going down through the torso, which leans forward, and out, the op out of his uh, leading leg and foot. So that's a little exaggerated, but what I was you know, concerned with here was making sure that he had a pose, a gesture. And then from there, I can start filling in 
some of his details. And for something like a gesture, I'm gonna work particularly loose and fast, because I'm more concerned with representing his emotion and his movement. And, you know, that was over-exaggerated, so I'm correcting myself as I, go, as I go. His head needs to be a little more to the left. His neck is more there. But again, working loose, and it's okay to make mistakes. This is an experiment, right? So that's our gesture. Third way you can approach this sort of drawing is to start with shapes. These shapes represent the mass of the body. So here we're focusing on the volume that we talked about before. So focusing on three-dimensional shapes of the body, we are more aware of the volume of the figure and can, with practice, make our figure look very solid on paper. So I'm gonna add some lines to mark the center. It's a, he's leaning a little. There's a cylinder for his neck which is actually a bit long. For his torso, I'm creating a sort of trapezoid. Um, I'm making sure that I'm keeping in mind the volume here. And then for his hips, I've actually chosen a sort of squat cylinder. That for me represents the bottom of his hemline. And his legs are kind of cylindrical. Not quite. I'm just filling in with some shapes. He's got his foot pointing out. This leg comes behind. He's got cylinders for his arms here. This arm in front. This one very foreshortened. That term that we talked about before. But here we go. I have focused on the volume of his body. It's not perfect, that's okay. I'm working fast and loose and I'm trying something out. So, now that we've explored some ways to approach drawing our figure, let's work a bit larger and slower. This sketch will become our finished drawing. I encourage you to use the approach that felt most comfortable to you. You're even free to use a combination of techniques. And I'm gonna make sure I'm staying loose I'm keeping an eye on the overall form. I'm drawing a bit more lightly and with more purpose. So a bit slower and I'm pressing less hard so that I can build up the details. And I'm also drawing the same figure for the fourth time. I should have a general sense of the pose and his proportions, but stay aware that by now um, you'll be drawing from memory, or you might. This is something to beware of. If you find yourself looking at your paper more than your reference photo, then you might be making assumptions. You want to make sure you keep referring back to your reference so that you aren't making assumptions and you can correct that. So I'm going to start with his head. As you've seen from the other drawings, that's usually where I start. He's got kind of a long head in addition to this hat up here. And a long neck and his relaxed wide shoulders his leaning torso his hips are pushed forward it's very elegant and you can see as you go slower his upper arm on this side is actually foreshortened so I'm gonna bring this arm up here I don't think I've been foreshortening it enough as we've gone. But I'm going to focus on that here. Cup is pretty far left. Drawing a little bit of detail for a sense of where this cup is. You can see his thumb over the base. And then the rest of his hand is below. Before we get too detailed, let's make sure we're laying out the rest of the body. His legs. He's got 
his jaunty leg. His leg is behind. And this foot isn't straight across as I've been drawing. It's actually at a bit of an angle itself. There we go. And we can see his full waist here. And see how I'm getting more firm with my lines as I've laid things out and I'm confident in their placement. And here I have my sketchy arm, my sketchy forearm. Well, it's actually hidden by a long sleeve. So I'm going to make sure that sleeve makes it in here with all of its beautiful folds. And then his hand with the lid of the container. This arm is actually just a little farther out than I've drawn it. And it's got this beautiful draping fabric which I'm using very gestural lines to define. So I just love the movement of it. And now I'm gonna add some boots. I'm not gonna be a perfectionist about it. I just wanna get that there are folds. And he's got his great long toes here long toes of these boots. Here we go. Correcting myself as I go. His knee is a little higher up. You can even move your paper around. Take a look. Continue to fill in details. This really beautiful tunic here with the collar and the sash. I'm going to try to get in some of those details. Again, as I'm confident with where things are, got a little bit of his crown peeking out of his hat here. It's got kind of a square jawline. And that line I drew for the center of his face is really not where I want it. I think it's a little more this way. So we can correct ourselves. He's got those high eyebrows and open eyes. A really serene expression. He's a wise man. He's also smiling just a bit. All right? So, here we go. Once we reach a point where we are happy with the level of accuracy and detail, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is an experiment. But once we're happy with it, it's time to use our marker. And by finishing with marker, we can really add a sense of finality or weight to our lines. You can do this by building up the um, pencil as well. That'll create a lot of smudges, especially if you use a soft pencil like I do. Um, and it really won't get quite as dark as a marker. So I'm opting to finish with a marker. And um, it can also allow you to play with a bolder artistic style. And you do not need to draw with the marker on every line. Try to think about what you've learned about the figure. Uh, go over the lines that you sketched and modified into the best position on your paper. And start by defining the major parts of his body and work inward toward more detail. So, I'm confident in this neck and shoulder line. So that's where I'm choosing to start. And I'm going to work with 
some pretty bold, long lines here. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're really trying to learn from our exercise today. Choosing the lines that I was most confident in. Sash going through his collar, his neck coming down to the other shoulder. And remember, I don't want to go over the line of his arm here because he's got this great folding fabric. Go down to his thin belt and his kind of rounded chest, down to the bottom of his tunic, his thigh and knee, and his shapely calf, and his wrinkly boots, and this great foot. And the other thigh and knee, just simple lines, filling it in, using what we've learned about this figure. And I'm even correcting myself as I go. You see how those were not on top of the lines I had on the paper. That's part of the experiment. There's the lid, and remember, Check your reference as you go. I haven't been looking at my reference the entire time here. This is gonna be the difficult part. This marker is really too thick for such delicate features, but I'm gonna do my best. And that's part of learning our materials. I really should have tried to find a marker that was a bit thinner, but this is what I had, and that is okay. So, checking our reference one more time. All right, once you're happy with the level of detail you've accomplished with marker, you're done. So to recap what we did today, we talked about figure drawing as an exercise in understanding the dynamic, changing human body. We selected a sculpture from the Met's collection to draw from, so you now can sketch works of art from multiple angles and learn about the human figure. We also experimented with some simple techniques for approaching our sketch and talked about representing gesture, perspective, proportion, and volume. I hope this session of drop-in drawing has been enjoyable and educational for you. Thank you for joining me today in exploring the human figure. And if you'd like to share your art, don't forget to tag us and include the Met Sketch hashtag when posting.